Hello, my name is Nat Gann. I'm a professor at Regent University School of Law, and I want to talk to you this afternoon about leadership development for law students. We've actually already talked a little bit about this in some of the previous presentations, but the leadership industry is a growth industry. A 2007 survey showed that over 700 academic institutions have a leadership program, a leadership institute. But as we think about from a law school perspective, many law schools, and we already heard some of this, but law schools are lagging behind in terms of leadership development for their students. And this is ironic given the fact that many lawyers are leaders in business, in, in politics, in government. And this is also interesting given the fact that traditional legal education actually does not foster effective leadership skills. We've seen, though, a change in this in the last 10 or so years. There have been scholarship and publications specifically about leadership as it relates to lawyers. And the new best practices book that just came out, for example, has a chapter, yes, right, a chapter on leadership uh, for law students. It's, I recommend it, Deborah Rohde wrote it. It's a short chapter, it's great, it's like five or six pages. Um, also, many of us in the room and others have started leadership institutes. Um, I just surveyed uh, on, online and saw several. I mentioned Regent, where I teach. We unfortunately do not have a leadership institute in the law school, but our, the motto of our school is Christian leadership to change the world. So the whole culture of the university is to promote leadership. What does this have to do with outcomes? Well, I think standard 302 says that we have to develop other professional skills that are important for competent lawyers. I think leadership is part of that. Many lawyers are in leadership positions, so how can we promote leadership development in our law students? Now, the first question with that is what is leadership, right? It's one of those touchy-feely concepts. Sometimes people stay away from it. It's not black and white, um, but that means that we need to focus on it. There's an expression that the soft stuff is the hard stuff, right? So the thing, the definition that I came across several years ago, very simple, very powerful, from John Maxwell. Some of you may have heard of him. It's a leadership guru. Guru is leadership is influence. We tend to associate leadership with status, a position, or power. But at its heart, leadership is influence. And all of our students are influencing other people around us, right? Either for the good or for the bad. We're all influencers. And so one of the things that we need to help our students think about is how can they understand their identity, understand their strengths and weaknesses, and, and say how that is going to play into their leadership identity. This direct, relates, in my mind, directly with professional identity. We heard a great uh, presentation on professional identity. I think a key aspect of professional identity is leadership development, but I, I tend to think that we haven't focused specifically enough on leadership as a separate skill, a separate construct, if you will, of professional identity. So what are some best practices to promote leadership among our law students? And I'll talk about some of the things that we're doing at Regent. You all are doing many things at your particular school. One thing that I would say even before we get into specific practices is our students want authenticity. So if we're talking about leadership, but we're kind of acting like it's not really that important, they're not going to buy it. We need to, we need to underscore this is an important aspect. It has to be integrated throughout their curriculum. The Carnegie Report, of course, talked about the pervasive method of instruction, particularly as it relates to professional identity. It works the same in terms of leadership. I think it needs to be more than just a seminar during orientation. Write something first year, second year, and third year where we talk about leadership. At Regent, we have what's called our Integrated Lawyer Training Program. There's lots of aspects of that, but one aspect I want to focus on is I'm teaching a class this semester on legal workplace skills. And I'm excited about this, that I'm ha having uh, someone that's certified in the Myers-Briggs type indicator to come and give all the students a Myers-Briggs test to go over that with them to help them assess their strengths and weaknesses, personality style, and how that will affect their leadership, um, leadership abilities and leadership development. We also have a mentor program. You've heard about that. Many of us have that in the room. But one of the things that I think we need to think more about is not just pairing our students with a lawyer, a judge, but how specifically can that mentor relationship promote leadership development and leadership skills in the students? At Regent, we have faculty mentoring. Every student is required to meet with their faculty advisor, faculty mem uh, mentor every semester. And they actually have a sheet they have to complete. And that faculty advisor and faculty and student need to talk about not just course selection, but also career planning issues, professionalism issues as well. So that's a way that we also promote um, leadership. We have student leadership lunches. And something that's a little different perhaps that we do at Regent with those leadership lunches is they're sponsored by the dean's office. But a part of those lunches is not just let's talk about problems in the school, but specifically how can we talk about leadership principles? How can we equip you as student leaders to be leaders in your community? My baby, as I call it, the academic success program. So one of my roles is to direct our academic success program at Regent. 
One of those aspects of that is we start students two weeks early, students that we identify in the admissions process that need some additional assistance transitioning uh, into law school. It's an extended academic orientation. I realized when I started that program, now 13 years ago, it would be very boring if I were in the front of the room all the time. So I thought, how can I take students that did well in the academic success program and turn them into TAs and mentor them? One of the best parts of my job is actually mentoring student leaders, mentoring students that in, in turn mentor other students and encourage them. Those ASP scholars meet with students one-on-one -on -one in sessions where they talk not only about uh, academic issues, but also life issues that affect their academic success. So that one-on-one -on -one aspect is really important. One thing that I would like to do that we don't do, and maybe some of you in the room do this, is have a capstone course. Think about your senior seminar when, when we were an undergrad, or some of you had a senior seminar. Why do we not have a senior seminar in law school? And some of you may have that. We don't have that at Regent. But I think that's a primary opportunity to discuss leadership as they're getting ready to graduate, as they're entering into the profession. And I think one of the hardest issues with this, and we saw a great example a few minutes ago regarding professional identity, is how to assess leadership, leadership development. I think it can be done. I think it's something that we need to work on. But I think, again, the assessment part is key. But if we think strategically it's important and we move forward, we can assess it well. Thank you very much.